So Thanksgiving is right around the corner and I know what a lot of you are probably thinking. I have been really good for the month of September. I deserve to take a break from dieting. I deserve to take a break and treat myself. And while you are not a dog and I don't think that you should be rewarding yourself with food, I think that it is totally acceptable and understandable why some of you feel the need to let loose this holiday season and take your foot off the gas pedal. But if that is gonna be followed by a bunch of guilt, shame, and you punishing yourself on the treadmill and you don't want to repeat this cycle year after year after year after every single Thanksgiving holiday season, this video is for you. All right, I promise that's enough of the jump cuts. I like the edit editing style of that that some fitness individuals do. I totally get it. It's more engaging that way for a society that is very distracted and loses interest in something so easily. But sometimes I just like to talk to you all and I lose my train of thought when I'm pausing and stopping, pausing and stopping. So let's actually sit down today. I have got some notes for you all of some different strategies of what we are going to look at implementing if you don't want to regret your choices during the holiday season, but you may want to take some time to maybe take that foot off the gas pedal ever so slightly and enjoy yourself. So like I said, we got some notes here. You know today's gonna be a good video. How can you stay on track during Thanksgiving? Obviously, Canadian Thanksgiving is this weekend and everybody else who is from the States, you got lots of time to prepare yourselves based off of these strategies that I'm about to go over today. So there are two different phases that you want to utilize. And before I get into them, I'll just preface this by saying that the strategies that I'm about to go over still allow you to be mindful with your choices, but give you a bit of an opportunity to still, you know, stay within control. So that way you don't feel any guilt or shame afterwards, but maybe you can just let loose ever so slightly without adopting the all or nothing mentality, which is what most people do. And the all or nothing mentality where you just mindlessly eat, you just eat emotionally and you don't pay attention to your hunger signals. You don't pay attention to your future goals for yourself. That's where a lot of the guilt and shame come into play after the holiday season. So there are two different phases that we want to consider before we go to the actual event. We wanna actually take some time to plan things out strategically before we go to the event and then during the event. That's where we want to be strategic. So we're gonna break those down today. So before the holiday season actually starts, obviously with it being Thanksgiving this weekend, it doesn't give you that much time to assess, but even just taking some time for like the remainder of 2024, asking yourself, because Christmas as we know is right around the corner as well too, asking yourself, you know, how many events do I want to participate in and how many events am I okay being a bench warmer at? Obviously a bench warmer is where you go to a specific social gathering and you're okay not fully participating. Maybe you go to your boss's house for a Christmas dinner. Not really that an amazing of an event where you really wanna focus on, you know, just building lasting memories in comparison to if you were having Christmas dinner with your 90 year old grandma, right? Right? That event, I would argue, you wanna be a starter at, you wanna participate in, you wanna focus more so on creating memories over progress. Whereas if you go to a boss's house for dinner, ah, you know what, you're probably okay mentally, you know, just kind of sitting on the sidelines and being much more mindful with your nutritional choices. So that's step number one, is event planning. So the three steps that I'm about to go over here, obviously I just went over step number one, I want you to think of the three E's, okay? So step number one, I'm actually gonna grab my whiteboard for this. I'm fully prepared today. Okay, the three E's, okay? So, you guys see that okay? Excellent. So for the three E's, the first one here, we have event planning. So don't just take this into consideration for Thanksgiving, take it into consideration for the remainder of the year. You kind of know roughly in your head, like, oh, I have my husband's 60th birthday in November. Oh, I have something, my mom's birthday, December 23rd or something like that. You know that you have your office Christmas party and then you have your family Christmas dinner. Oh, and maybe you enjoy celebrating New Year. 
years, you know? Take the time to actually plan out for yourself how many events you have for the remainder of the year. So how many events do you have? How many do you want to participate in? And which ones are you okay being a bench warmer at? The next E, three E's, right? The next one is expectation management. So say you want to participate in all of these events. You don't want to be a bench warmer at any of them. You want to go hard and enjoy the holiday seasons that are among us over the next couple of months here. And I want you to know that there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing unhealthy about that neither. But we have to take the time to manage our expectations. You know, if you're in a fat loss phase right now, do you really think that you're gonna continue losing fat if your primary focus is to participate in all of these social gatherings? Probably not. We've all been there, right? Where we go out, we see the scale go up a couple of pounds and it feels like it takes a good week to get things back down. That's very normal. That's very typical for everybody myself included. I can't participate in every single event that comes my way. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to maintain my current body composition. And that's my goal right now. I'm not trying to lose body fat, but even just being in a maintenance phase where I'm just trying to maintain things, live my life and enjoy it. I still have to take the time to focus on event planning and managing my expectations. So that way I know like, hey, if I do wanna participate in all these events, am I okay with maybe seeing the scale go up and trying to you know, rectify that later on? If the answer is yes, then good, go enjoy yourself this holiday season, but don't beat yourself up afterwards when you already know in advance what the trade-off of your decisions are. So that's the second E. The last E here is eating practices. We wanna prepare our mindset. We don't wanna say screw it. So if we've decided that we do wanna participate in all of these events, that doesn't mean that we get to say screw it and eat mindlessly because that's where the guilt and shame is really gonna be amplified at the end of your holiday season. We still wanna take the time to uh, not enter into a screw up mindset. We wanna focus on eating mindfully, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. And we want to you know, just try to focus on not chasing perfection, okay? So avoiding that all or nothing mentality is gonna be extremely important when it comes to eating practices, more so healthy eating practices. All right, so we have taken the time now to know how many social gatherings we want to participate in during the holiday season and say it's the day of the social gathering. So let's move into this weekend. I'm sure a lot of people want to participate in Thanksgiving dinner with their family. If you are lucky enough to not be the one to prepare Thanksgiving dinner, then you have a lot of free time during the day to really just prepare yourself physically and mentally so that way you can enjoy your evening in a guilt-free manner. Now, just because this is where that all or nothing mentality comes into play for a lot of people, just because you are taking the evening off from your health, from your goals, from your typical habits that doesn't mean that you need to take the entire day off you still have like what I don't know like 12 hours eight hours before you have to go over there that is a lot of time for you to still have a very successful day and that way like I said you can enjoy your evening in a guilt-free matter so some things that I typically recommend doing for a lot of individuals is to stick to their regular routine if you track your macros great track the majority of your day if you exercise on that given day great go do something for yourself you know don't don't put on your fat pants first thing in the morning and bust open a pumpkin pie because, oh well, what's the point? I might as well go all out and enjoy myself. No, take the time to still set yourself up for success because I'll tell you this, one meal isn't going to make or break your goals. Just like one perfect day isn't gonna make or break your goals. You're not gonna be lean and shredded by having an amazing perfect meal. Just like you're not gonna gain a bunch of body fat if you have one off meal and it puts you over. So when it comes to this, before the event, I want you to remember hat trick. So what do I mean by this? There's three things that I want you to do throughout the day, okay? So here we go, a hat trick. Number one is to have protein before the event, okay? High protein before the event. Can you guys actually see that? 
yeah, it's coming through, right? I'm just making sure it's focusing. Have protein before the event. So typically, if you save one of your higher protein meals or maybe just a protein shake before you actually go to dinner, that's gonna work in your favor because protein, as we know, it takes longer to digest in your system. It's gonna sit in your system a lot longer, creating the illusion that you're not as hungry, which will, in theory, reduce that risk of overconsuming calories. But if you go to the meal, go to the event on an empty stomach, obviously it's gonna be way easier for you to overconsume and overindulge. And I want you to indulge, but not overindulge. Those two things are very, very different. So having some sort of high protein meal, a protein shake, maybe a chicken salad, an hour-ish, 30 minutes-ish before you go over, that's gonna be really, really helpful, like I said, to reduce that risk of overconsuming calories. So high protein meal before the event. Number two is to hit the gym before the event. Now you don't have to hit the gym if this is typically a day off for you, but go do something active. Go for a walk, go to a yoga class, go to a spin class, go to the gym for an extra day. And this isn't as a way for you to feel like you need to work up some sort of deficit to burn off the calories from your dinner. No, that's not the case. That's not what we're trying to accomplish with you getting in some movement. As we know, right, exercise is just such a great way to relieve stress. It's one of the best stress management strategies. If you find that you're feeling overwhelmed, you have a lot of anxiety over going to the social gathering because there's this fear of you overindulging. You know, maybe this is the first time you're implementing these strategies that I'm talking about. So there's a lot of fear of the unknown, which can accumulate more stress. And I don't want that for you. I want you to enjoy yourself again in a guilt-free matter. Exercising before the event is such a great way for you to just alleviate some of that stress, allow you to still feel really good about yourself and just put you into a, a clear and collective state. So again, you can just enjoy your evening. The last thing of the hat trick here is to have perspective. Give yourself a bit of a pep talk here. Having perspective is really important and, you know, just telling yourself like, you know what, one bad meal isn't going to make or break me. I'm going to enjoy myself because who knows, this may be my last Thanksgiving dinner with my mom. This may be my last Thanksgiving dinner with my grandma. And we don't know that, right? We don't know when any of us our last day is. So take the time to understand that, you know what, sometimes making those memories is more important. So keep that perspective in the back of your mind. All right, so now it's officially time for you to go to the event, right? You have had a very successful day. You have prepared yourself physically and mentally. You had a nice high protein meal prior to going to the event. What the heck do you do when you actually get there? Because this is where the lights go off for a lot of people and they just say, screw it. And again, guilt and shame come into play the following day. I want you to remember the acronym CHEW. This is gonna be a very helpful strategy to allow you to stay mindful with your choices. All right, so CHEW. We have C first and foremost. Choose protein and vegetables. First and foremost, when we are filling up our plates, eat the protein, eat the vegetables. I know you wanna go for the mashed potatoes and oh my gosh, stuffing, so amazing, it's my favorite. Eat those things last, eat nice and slowly, focus on eating protein and vegetables first because like what I said previously with protein, same thing with vegetables, those two things take a lot longer to digest, so you're gonna feel a lot more full. So again, just reducing that risk of over-consuming calories. So choose high protein and vegetables before anything else. Now let's move on to H. Have fun with foods that you enjoy in moderation. Have fun with pumpkin pie, enjoy yourself, but again, within moderation. Something that I find to be helpful because people are like, hey, well, great, what does in moderation mean? It's a subjective term for everybody, right? Because in moderation to me might mean one slice of pie. 
in moderation for somebody else who typically has the whole pie might mean maybe only three slices of pie. That term is subjective, so take the time to actually quantify it for yourself, for desserts, for alcohol, right? Actually taking the time to quantify it before the event is very, very helpful so that way you can have fun with these items within moderation. So if you say like, you know what, I'm only gonna have two slices of pie tonight, that's great, you set that intention before actually going there, and if you remember the acronym CHU, have fun in moderation, that's where it's gonna trigger you, oh right, okay, I'm allowing myself to have two slices of pie. That's gonna be a helpful way, again, to keeping you nice and mindful. Moving on, we have E. E, we want to eat until we feel physically full. Eat until we feel physically full. So eating until we phys feel physically full can be a little bit of a struggle for a lot of people. And the reason for that is just because our brain and our actual stomach aren't linked. There's a bit of a delay. So that's why we tend to feel really hungry even though we feel physically stuffed after eating something and then later on that hunger mentally we're like okay i'm actually full so what i find to be helpful is to just stop eating until you feel about 80 percent full so you might be like oh that was so good but i could have some more right now that's an indication that you're probably 80 percent full and if you give it a little bit of time you will notice that that hunger goes away and then you will feel just the right amount of satisfaction versus feeling like oh my gosh I overdid it you have to undo your button and yeah enough said there which leads into the last one W wait 15 minutes before seconds so obviously E and W go hand in hand here because if you wait 15 minutes remember what i said about that delay between our brain and our actual stomach waiting about 15 minutes is going to allow those things to line up and then you can actually assess like oh do i actually want seconds i'm actually a lot more full than i realize or you may realize like, oh, you know what? I'm still actually hungry, not 80% full. And it's been about 15 minutes. I'm gonna go have a little bit more, but still by waiting, you're probably gonna grab a lot less than what you would have if you didn't wait. So taking that time to wait and listen to your body is really, really important. And then finally, I'll just talk about some different strategies of how you can eat mindfully. A lot of these strategies sound very simple in nature, but they are not easy to do, especially if you have never really implemented any of these strategies before. But something as simple as just paying attention to the aromas, the textures, the flavors of your food can be really helpful with you just, you know, slowing down eating in general. And again, if we eat a lot slower, it's gonna help get that delay where your brain is telling you, I'm hungry, I want more, much more in line with your true hunger signal so you don't overdo it. So just pay attention to what you are eating and the uh, actual tastes of it. Something else is to just take your time when you are chewing. You know, count to 20 in your head. You know, you don't need to have your food swallowed in five bites. If it takes about 20 bites, and I know for some people that is the case for turkey, which is a blessing in disguise, take your time, you know, 20-ish bites before you swallow. Put your fork down in between each bite because again, that slows you down where you're not like cutting and uh, you know trying to get your next bite while you're still chewing. When you're chewing, put your fork and knife down, look around, talk to people, slow down. And again, grabbing your fork and knife, that's gonna really just slow you down as well too. I know, like I said, these strategies sound simple in nature, but they are very effective. So definitely worth giving a try with everything else that we talked about today. Hopefully this is helpful. And then one final bonus tip, you guys, is to just enjoy yourself. It's just food. You know, memories with your friends and your family is important and taking the time to keep perspective of that is very important too. Happy holidays, team.